We're really excited to be here today to talk about a new pilot that's going to be going into our schools and, and for you to get a bit more information about what all this means in terms of positive impacts on our children. Um, just by way of, of, of context, um, I'm Mary Rodriguez, Chief Officer in the Ministry of Education, and I'll be introducing our panel members shortly. But just to put this initiative um, in, 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 in context, over the last few years, our ministry has um, developed a lot, many different partnerships that have aimed to address challenges that we are encountering with our young people uh, becoming involved in crime and antisocial behavior in our schools and community. And just to give you an example of two that I hope most people will be familiar with, uh, the first one is uh, our BEST teams, which stands for Behavior and, and Education Support Teams. We're currently providing support through these teams for approximately 400 students in our schools and all of them are on our at-risk registers and really this initiative is a result of a partnership between many of our agencies within government as well as other private sector agencies so a true example of, of partnership there that's making a difference to our young people we also of course run the extended after-school program another intervention program this one aimed at keeping our children safe and off the street at um, times when they're more at risk of engaging in antisocial behavior so the program operates Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and we are pleased to say that we're operating programs, uh, nine different programs now at all our, of our, sorry, in our schools, and we have over 1,400 students who participate on a regular basis. So very, very exciting. And again, the government um, is a major source of funding for this, this uh, extended after school program, but we really rely heavily on volunteer and private sector support. So two examples of, of partnership that are really coming together to provide innovative, exciting, meaningful and impactful programs to support our young people. So today we, we get to introduce an exciting new initiative, as I said, a new partnership with an organization called Youth Act. Uh, it's a new not-for-profit uh, focused on implementing prevention and intervention programs to reduce youth, youth crime. Uh, the, the chairman um, is with us, Ms. Bonnie Anglin, on the stage here, as, as well as one of the board members, Ms. Tasha Ibex garcia and you'll hear, uh, I'm sure she'll tell you about the others and the work that they'll be doing. Uh, but the ministry, our ministry, has, has been engaging with this organization. We've been working very closely, but we, for this, this, this initiative to become a reality, it's not just our ministry, but so many other government agencies and NGOs and and we have in our in, in in the group here today representatives and this is not all but but if you can see we we have over 15 20 uh, different agencies that are coming together to make this program a reality so I think that's the best possible example of partnerships to support our children as we always say it takes a, a village to raise a child education is everybody's business and and this is a, the truest example of that um, You'll hear more details about the actual program that we're initiating, but to say Youth Act has agreed to be the agency leading on implementing what we're going to be calling a Crime Awareness Day for our high schools. We are targeting year eight in our government high schools, a particular age group where we've identified um, as, as having the, 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 being the best age to have the, the kind of impact we want from this program. Uh, the program is modeled after a, a program that operates out of Jersey called Prison Me No Way um, and it really the curriculum gets suspended for a whole day children exper experience a whole range of workshops and and um, activities that are designed to provide them with real factual information from people who are out there in the field so it's not just teachers telling or lecturing them about this is good this is bad you know don't get involved in gangs and, and, and all the different issues it's about them coming face to face with experts in the field who have real life experience and knowledge and insights into the issues that they're going to be sharing, but also, um, very importantly, engaging with the young people, not in a lecture type approach, but giving them information and helping them to, to make decisions, giving them, empowering them to make the right kind of decisions. So as I said, we're hoping to partnership this, um, sorry, to pilot this program in May and June with two of our schools, Clifton Hunter and John Gray. Uh, so very shortly, they'll be off the ground and we're really, really excited uh, to, to, to have this opportunity to pilot and then learn from that to, to be ready for a full uh, rollout in, uh, in the next school year. So a true partnership and 
I'd like to thank all the different agencies um, who are here today. And if, if just, just to give you a sample uh, of the people who, are, who have signed our memorandum of agreement, um, we have, of course, the Youth, the youth Anti-Crime Trust, Youth Act. We have Department of Education Services, Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, Northward Prison Service, Judicial Administration, Department of Counseling Services, Department of Children and Family Services, National Drug Council, Health Services Authority, Children and Youth Services Foundation, CASE, Government Information Services, and the Hope for Today Foundation. So it takes all these agencies, all these people, with the support of their respective ministries and portfolios to make this program a reality. And we're so excited by the very positive response and, and we can't just wait to see, to get in there and be interacting with our young people and hearing their questions and, and, and their responses to help us to make this even um, a, a bigger success coming going forward. So allow me then just to introduce you to our other panel members formally. We have, of course, the Honorable Rolston Anglin, our Deputy Premier and Minister of Education, Financial Services and Employment. We have Ms. Bonnie Anglin, who's the Chairperson for Youth Act. Uh, we have Mr. Sidney Williams. Um, he's a General Manager of Bonaventure Boys Home, and he's he is one of the presenters, so he can tell you all the uh, expectations we've set for him in terms of, of what he's going to make, what he's going to contribute to the program. We have Ms. Tasha Ebanks Garcia. You know her uh, for many different things, but today she's representing uh, Youth Act. She's one of the board members. We also have Mr. Michael Miles, again, hopefully not unfamiliar to you. Um, uh, he is uh, not only a minister, ministry uh, staff member whose focus is on at-risk students, but he's also a board member. So he's been our ministry liaison and, and, and really a key guiding force to making this a reality. So I've said a lot. We, at the end, as we normally do, we'll open it up to questions if you have any questions. But again, thank you for being here today and for being a part of the program and, and for being a part of this launch. And with those words, I'll turn you over to Minister. Thank you very much, and I do want to thank all of the organizations who have signed this memorandum of agreement. It is going to be, in my mind, you know, crucial for us moving forward uh, that we continue to work collaboratively. Um, I think in our community we've talked about this for a long time. I think our best teams um, are really starting to take root now and in, in showing best practice in this area as to how we go about trying to have a real positive impact on young people's lives, not just um, in a very insular way or in a silo way, but but actually bringing to bear all of the necessary uh, services and, and service providers to have that positive impact on their lives. Um, for me, what's what's going to be exciting is is as we as a school system um, develop our comprehensive character education um, program, because. The fact of the matter is these programs are, or this initiative is, is, is vitally important. However, all school children need to have and be exposed to the fact that we have to ensure that as we become more inclusive in our schools, that our approach to character development and, and what we expect of every child <clears throat> in our system is, is vitally important. Um, all of this will will be um, complementary to to that, and it will drive key pieces of of character development and character education. But we have to, as a system, set very clear expectations about what a Caymanian student ought to look like, ought to behave like, whom is vitally important as we all know but we also clearly understand that we have to intervene unfortunately in all too uh, frequent situations does government and government agencies have to intervene with services of varying levels and, and, and sources but I think that once we are able to deliver certainly on what this program um, initiative will deliver to our young people. We will have made a real positive impact on on a lot of lives across our islands, and, and really, that's what this 
what we ought to be doing as a community is ensuring that each of our initiatives are, are well thought out and are able to work and are able to deliver the impact. Impacting lives, changing lives, seeing a young person who was on a particular path in September and by the end of the school year seeing their lives change, that's what's most important. That is what is going to change the, the landscape of Cayman and, and, and allow us to have um, more of our young people positively contributing um, to society, positively contributing to their community, and most importantly, positively contributing to our economy. Crime doesn't just hurt. People often talk about the, the price of, um, or the cost of running Northward Prison. The cost of our running Northward Prison is, is just a piece, just as the tip of the iceberg. The fact of the matter is when you look at the real potential that is lost in terms of the contribution that those people, that do, the persons who are at Northward or Fairbanks Prison could make to our community, to their families, and to our economy, you then see what the true cost of crime is. Um, and so I'm excited that such um, an impressive group has come together, I'm sure with their um, tenacity and vision and leadership, that this isn't going to be um, an initiative that starts and peters out. I'm, I'm confident that this is going to be one uh, that when we look back a few years' time, we will say that this has made a real difference. And, and for me um, and for government, that's the most important thing. So I want to thank all who have um, put the effort in to get us to this point, all the agencies, and certainly once we remain committed, I'm confident that we're going to see the real difference um, that this program will make to the lives of, of young people. Thank you, Minister. And one of, one of the comments we would, we, when we were talking informally, we said that makes this, this arrangement so very different. Normally, um, it's about government agencies taking the initiative to set up programs and then reaching out to the private sector to contribute. What's, what's different about this program is that we have a group of persons who come together to lead the charge and to take responsibility uh, for fundraising and, and for managing this new program. We, our role then becomes to support and ensure the quality of the program, ensure that what's delivered represents the very best practices in terms of teaching and learning uh, and, and how we want our children to be engaged with. So more quality insurance and a partnership from that sense. So we're really, really excited and that provides a good segue in to introduce our chairperson for Youth Act, Ms. Bonnie Anglin. And, and, and to, Bonnie, you'll, you'll have to explain why, 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 are you, why did this group come together? Why are you interested in in delivering and working with us to deliver this particular product. Well, thank you, Mary, and thank you, Mr. Minister. Um, you have explained so much about this program that you made my job particularly easy. Um, they were scared of giving me a mic because when I get it, I don't give it back. So I'm going to make this really brief because we've got a lot of presentations and other information to share with you. I was approached Last year, May, this is our anniversary, through the ministry, by the chief officer, to ask if I was interested in um, forming a, some, some, a group, because they had this, um, they had seen this Prison Me No Way program, and they loved it, and they wanted to implement it in the schools. I said yes, I looked at the material, I looked at it and said, but it's a great program, but have we forgotten all the other strategies and recommendations that we do need to be looking at? And hence the reason for this huge, large folder here. Um, I t took that into account, called some people together, formed a board, and said, do we want to do a prison me no way program, or do, want, do we want to think about Cayman and our students and the whole larger thing, including our parents, including our general um, Caymanians. We formed a board. Um, I'll introduce the board a little bit later. We wanted to structure. She did some already. You've made my job so easy. We wanted to structure the presentation in about coming together and then, of course, the pilot program. Um, you've already said all the thanks to everyone. It's been a lot of work to get us here. And you're going to say where. They're going to soon tell you where. Um, I want to thank you. I, we were um, 
about 6.30 yesterday evening trying to dot all the I's, cross all the T's. I apologize for all the people that I spelt their names wrong, that I forgot, that I, and they're here. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Innes, I knew you were coming. Um, thank you for that. I apologize. And um, what else do I want to say? And however, instead of being totally uh, maybe not so forgiving of me, I think what you should be most um, concerned about is that between 2010 and 2011, we had a 100% increase in prosecutions in the criminal justice system for young people. It was that thought in my mind that when I was told about prison mean away, which is the great way to begin, that that is only one part. There's parents, there's society, there's civil society, there's bus drivers, there's neighbors, there's a community. We have to all do this together. Um, before I say any more, maybe I'll wait until we are closing. I had a great little speech. I was up till 2 this morning getting ready for this. It's all gone out. It's not in any format. <laughs> I was to go before the minister. But I'd like to also say thank you, Mary. Uh, she kept us on track. Thank you, Minister. He wanted to um, implement it. I would get uh, uh, calls that Mrs. Rodriguez wanted a progress report. I don't work for the Ministry of Education. <laughs> so I would kind of go, to, you know, really, a progress report. So I'd, we are friends. I, we went to the same university. So I'd call Mary and we'd have a conversation, Mrs. Rodriguez, and I'd say, you know, I'm really busy because this is what we do on the weekends, at night, lunch times. Thanks to Tasha's children for saying, Mommy, please don't be too late to come to these meetings. So I'd call Mrs. Rodriguez and say, you know, I, I don't have a progress report for this week. Well, tell that to the minister. I don't work for him either. So we have done this on weekends. Lunch hours, nights, I don't have many more Saturdays and Sundays, but we are thrilled. We're going to deliver a great program, and I don't want to go on your, uh, on your presentation. This is my counselor. I call her at the middle of the night, panic attacks. We're not going to be on time. We're not going to get this right, and she's been there. Um, Tasha, you can introduce the pilot program, which we're calling Crime Awareness and Prevention Day. It will be introduced at the two schools. And I'd like to say to what, I, partially what uh, we just heard, it is a pilot, but it will never go away. When we come back in September, it is throughout the schools, public and private. It's ongoing, and that is only our first pro um, program but we do believe in excellence and we will work hard to get that right, do it a few times, get it right, and then we're off to something else. So another time, we'll be here signing agreements for another program and on and on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bonnie. Did and, I talk and, too and long? And all, all, although <laughs> she said that I, you know, I was very scary and all that, I, I, I think that was an exaggeration. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, and I just wanted to say how amazing it's been to work with an agency that I thought I didn't have to be scary because the, the group of people who have come together is it, with such commitment and eagerness to make a difference and to do it in a way that we, we are working in a very collaborative um, way. So, so, so not hopefully, uh, hopefully exaggerated on, 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 on the impact, maybe. <laughs> and that's it. We, we, we're we're delivering. We're, we're delivering. delivering. There, there <laughs> we go. Um, okay, so Ms. Tasha, you'll talk a bit more about the actual day, is the program. Is that um, a, yes. a little bit more about the board and why we're here? Yes. Okay. Um, and then Mike. Two and a half years ago, I returned home from graduate school. I was away for about six years, and it became abundantly clear very quickly that that our country, that our community, and that our youth had changed tremendously in my time abroad. Um, through the work that I've engaged in, um, in private practice as a clinician, as a family therapist, as well as through the work that I've done with the Passport to Success program, which is an initiative of the Ministry of Education, Financial Services, and Employment, not to be an alarmist, but we have a very serious problem. Our youth are in trouble. 
And while it's easy for those of us who have the luxury of sitting in the comfort of our living room, it might be easy for us to say, well, it's not our problem. But when they start breaking into our cars and into our homes, it is going to become our problem. And, and that day is not far from here. And, and we've seen those days, um, as I see raised eyebrows. Um, we, those of us who have voluntarily stepped up and, and are serving through this board, we do so because we see it as our problem. We see the challenges of our youth and our children as our problem. And the question that we ask ourselves is, if we do not pick up this cross, then who will? And it is for each and every one of us to do our part. And for us, our role and our part is in sitting on this board. Um, for those of you in attendance and, and those who aren't, weren't able to be here but that are a part of this, we all play a really important role in this. Um, through this initiative, through this public-private pu public partnership, and the only way this initiative could take place is through a public-private partnership and through the support of the stakeholders within the community, through the support of parents, through the support of teachers. And it is by all of us coming together collaboratively that this in initiative will take place, it will be successful, and it will go on to be used as a vehicle to facilitate and create change. Our young people need us. And we need to find ways to not address the problem once it's become a problem, but ways of looking at prevention. Prevention, they say, is, is much cheaper than the cure. Um, we, know, we know what the cure is, and I don't know if, if a prison sentence is much of a, of a cure. Um, rates of recidivism tell us that it's not much of a deterrent. And so we need to look at preventative measures. The, the initiatives that Youth Act will be launching, and Youth Act is looking right now at Prison Me No Way, but this is just a start. What we've done, as Bonnie has shared, is we've looked at all the recommendations of all the reports done by all the consultants that have come and gone. And in looking at those recommendations, we are looking at what we can do to facilitate initiating them. So it's not that we're coming to share with you what's wrong. We're not coming to, con to, to act as consultants to do another survey to give you more statistics. We are looking at the recommendations that have already been put forth, that have been put forth for years, and taking those recommendations as they are related to youth and crime and preventing crime among our youth and implementing those. The first vehicle of which will be a program that's designed after the Prison Me No Way program. And we're piloting that program. So the pilot, again, it's, it's a start, it's a launch. It's for us to go into the schools, we'll have a Crime Awareness Day, we'll pilot it, we'll come back, we'll get together with the stakeholders, we'll review that day, and then we'll prepare for the new school year. Because in the new school year, then we're rolling it out and launching it across the school system. So this is our start. Um, one of the things that's, that's important is to, to get an understanding of what that day will look like. Um, and, and thankfully, we have one of our presenters with us on the panel here this morning. And he's going to be able to share with you what that day will look like in terms from his seminar. So what students will, will have the opportunity to do is we are we're taking control of the school, locking the school down for a day. And through the support of prison officers and police officers who will be on campus and, and vis visually there and available to students, they will help to guide that day and structure that day. Students will go from classroom to classroom, engage in various seminars. And what we've done is we've taken kind of the, the issues that statistics tell us are the greatest threats to our students ending up in prison. So looking at drugs and gangs, looking at gun violence. Um, we are also looking at kind of our, our proactive measure is looking at social responsibility. Now we have a huge issue we know with bullying, but the one way to tackle a bully is to teach them empathy. If our young people have empathy, if they have compassion, if they are socially responsible young people, they're not going to be bullies. They're also not going to see crime as the first avenue of choice for them. And they're going to engage in some dialogue with themselves that will, will hopefully set them on a different course. So we'll also be looking at social responsibility through these seminars. So taking them through a number of seminars using experts from our community, people who are very visual. We will have experts from the courts. Um, we will have individuals who, who have 
have made poor choices in their life will come to tell their story so that it's not just somebody sitting on their high horse speaking through textbook and education, but somebody who's been there, done that, and has lived to tell the tale, to share their stories so that our young people will make different decisions when they're faced with the decision of if, whether they're going right or whether they're going left. So what this opportunity will do will, is it will empower them with knowledge, with experience, and will motivate them to make different decisions and these different decisions that we are challenging them to make will make a difference as they chart out the course of their life. I'm, I'm honored to have been asked um, by Michael Miles to be a part of this initiative. Um, we've been working tirelessly, as Bonnie has shared, for a number of months, particularly Michael and Bonnie have been working very tirelessly. They are fearless leaders. Um, and and I'm, I'm so excited for what is to come, um, not just in the pilot, but what will come as we continue and as we bring you other initiatives, as the minister has shared, this is not an initiative that's going to fall by the wayside that is here today and gone tomorrow. We're going to be here, and we are in this fight for the long run. Um, and I thank you so much for partnering with us in this initiative. Thank you so much, Tasha. And I'd like, Michael's not on the panel, but, uh, but he's certainly one of the presenters. I want you to have a chance to hear from uh, right from the get-go uh, when we did the exploratory work and, and traveling over to Jersey and, and London to, to experience their version of, of, of the program. So Michael, would you like to share some more insights of just to give us uh, a sense of, of what, what this initiative will do, this, this initial crime um, day? Thanks, Ms. Rodriguez. Um, Three years ago, when I entered the ministry, uh, Ms. Rodriguez had me get settled. I came into the ministry, I think, in May, and she had me get settled. And a month later, she brought a very thick file um, about Prison Me No Way and said, I want this program, go get it. Um, and since that time, we have worked very, very hard to ensure that this program is here. I also want to just highlight um, Mr. Gary Ruddy, because I mean, I can yes. tell you if it, yes. if it wasn't for Gary being part of this initiative, I, I honestly don't know if we would have been here at this point. He's a stellar supporter of this program. He sponsored it from the get-go. He brought in the consultants to help deliver the program. He paid for a number of us to go to Europe to look at the program, and when we got back, that we kind of stalled um, a little bit more. He got back on my back and said, listen, I want this program, go get it for me. Let's make sure we can save more of our youngsters. Um, the experience in, uh, in Jersey and the UK was powerful um, to, the, to, to say the least, and I think Ms. Rodriguez have gone into some detail about that. Um, we learned so much about, as collaborative efforts are made, what we can actually do. And I was so impressed by numerous agencies getting together and saying, we need to put an end to this. We are going to save our youth. We're going to save not just one, but we're going to save many of them if we can prevent. And as Tasha alluded to, you know, when we are together, we are a force. And I have seen that through my workings with, uh, with, with BEST. I've seen my workings with the extended after school programs. Many of our entities in here have joined the fight and have said, listen, we are here with you. You know, we are gonna make sure that we can make this work. Just letting you guys know what to expect on the Crime Awareness Day. Um, the critical entities that's part of this program right now is the prison uh, unit or the prison agency and the police service. They're critical to the inception of this program. Um, we basically go into uh, the high schools, we lock down the grade eight um, uh, um, age group, and we turn that into almost a mock prison. The children are all lined up, prison and police leads the way, and you've heard um, my colleagues talk about uh, the different workshops. We have a lot of very powerful, powerful speakers we went straight to the source. Um, we knew that our teachers simply could not deliver um, this program. Um, therefore, we needed professionals within the field and we've done that. Um, I would like to tell you, I mean, it's been an awesome experience for me because every time, you know, I met with Adrian Seals or, you know, I met with um, Natalie or, you know, I met with another agency, they were like, you know, let's get this done. 
um, we are on board with you. And it was great for me to hear that they wanted to be part of this, even though they're in the capacities of keeping people locked up or arresting people. They truly wanted to make sure that you know, we were in a position where we can prevent our young people from getting to their agencies. So I'm happy to report you know, that we have all of our agencies as part of this. Um, you know, it was just last week I was in the room with uh, Judith Seymour and you know, she reminded me, okay, we need to get yet another thing done. You know, their agency have suggested that we have a therapist in each room, so we're putting that in. It wasn't one of the things that Jersey or, or the UK had. So you know, we have a lot of really wonderful opportunities to make this better than uh, prison me no way, but also powerful for our young people. Um, I would like to thank everyone. I, I know everyone here thanked everyone, but I would like to say thank you again. And I would like to encourage your support. Um, hopefully, once we leave this room, you know, people don't just run off and say, okay, well, you know, back to square one. But I'd like us to ensure that the momentum continues, and that's important for us. May 31st is just a couple of weeks away, and I am, we are certainly going to need all of the support, um, all of the encouragement, because as Bonnie said, this is neither our full-time job as well. It's actually mine. So a lot of, it, a lot of the pressure was normal mm -hmm. on me, but I'm mm -hmm. happy that you know, folks like Bonnie have taken a charge. You know, she's working hard. Tasha have come in, and Julian Parlesi, and Joy Basteo, and Paula Jackson. And um, you know, Sydney Williams called me last week and said, listen, I saw you guys on TV. I want to be part of the board. And right away, I called Garth Arch and said, listen, I want Sydney on the board. Can he actually join us? So there's a lot of people that, you know, that have put their foot forward um, that are saying, you know, we want to help. Um, we want to stop uh, uh, having children go to prison. We want to stop burying our youth. So again, thank you guys for being here. It's always a pleasure to work with you guys. And I appreciate all the support. Thank you, Michael. Um, and just to go over the list before we hear from um, Sydney, the list of the lesson plans, so you get a feel for what, what that day might look like. We'll have one that focuses on court law and life and the, and the life of imprisonment. So again, getting kids um, to be face to face with what that, that's like. Um, we have one called Danger of Dangers of Gangs. We have another that will be focusing on the life of crime and drugs. What are the issues related with that? Sexual trauma is another workshop. We have one on guns and gun crime. We also have another on effects of drugs and alcohol. And then as you've heard, um, one that deals with social responsibility, um, bullying and other such um, activities. So a really range of topical issues. And this is how we customize um, this program for the Cayman Islands. Sorry. No. Um, we, this is how we this is how we customize the program from Cayman. Uh, the, you'll see the list of topics in Jersey or the UK are quite different. We started off by identifying what are the priority areas within the Cayman Islands, and then we adapted and went out from there to plan, well, what would be the delivery. So, so these are all topical issues. They're very much things that uh, we are aware that we need to, to get in there and intervene on. So we're, we're, as we keep saying, we're excited to see how the children respond, to get in there to the classrooms. Um, but without further ado, let me introduce you to Sydney, who will be doing the, um, well, he'll tell us about the workshop that he's doing and just very briefly give us a sense of, of, of your approach and what that's going to be like. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm just saying I'm very excited and I'd like to thank the minister and you, Ms. Rodriguez, for allowing me to be a part of this initiative. Um, and I, I just need to say this, that for the youth of Cayman and the children of Cayman, and naturally everybody will say, well, you're not from Cayman. No, I'm not. I'm from the U.S. But my compassion and my heart is for children and for youth anywhere. I don't care who you are or where you are. You don't deserve to be in prison. You don't deserve to be in a broken home. You don't deserve to live a life addicted to drugs and alcohol. You deserve a, a, a good life, and, and that's my compassion. So it doesn't matter where I am. I'm just drawn to trying to bring somebody a better way of life, and that's why I'm here. Um, the other thing is that I have 25 years. I'm a licensed uh, drug and alcohol counselor and have been for 25 years. I've worked in juvenile corrections for over 15 years in one capacity as a drug counselor or mental health counselor or both sometimes. Uh, so I have experience, a wealth of experience in drugs and alcohol and working in the prison system. Um, I, was, I was speaking a few minutes ago, I was saying I, 
I went to the seminary and had my master's in divinity and thinking that I was going to go pastor and preach and everything. And we were talking about God has a sense of humor. He puts you right where he needs you, not where you want to be. And every time I try to get away or do something else, I always end up back working with youth. And, and I love it. Uh, so with the drug and alcohol, uh, which I, I think is a very good thing, the, the sessions will be set up as they're open-ended, they're open discussions, and, and this, the sessions are set up that it would inspire or encourage the kids to participate in the conversation. It's not a conversation of drugs are bad because they've heard that before, but actually it's what we would call a, a process group where they will generate the direction that the conversation or the group will go in. And you'll ask uh, open-ended questions. What are the reasons that some people take drugs? And, and most kids will say that, uh, well, they take it to feel better. They take it because of peer pressure. And, and peer pressure, let me tell you, is usually the last thing on the list that they'll get to because no kid wants to make, wants to feel like somebody else made them use drugs. They want to feel like it's their choice. And I'll leave them with that. And we can talk about that, about your choices. Because one thing that we talk about in the drug and alcohol seminar is about healthy choices. What are the choices that you made? What are some of the things that influence you? Why do you think people are sad? What are some of the family influences that come in to you? Where's your father? Where's your mother? What's your relationship? Do you think that affects you? These are very deep and probing questions, but they're questions that make young people think about. It's not just about the drugs, because if you understand drugs and alcohol, and hopefully in these seminars we'll get to the process, drugs and alcohol are the last thing that happens in a, a myriad, a list of things that happen to you in the course of their life. Their drugs and alcohol seems to be the only escape for the misery that they find themselves confined in. Uh, my approach is to help them to understand those miseries and understand those pains and not to necessarily take those pains away from them but to show them a way to live with those pains and overcome those pains to become productive members of society. It's exciting. I'm excited about it because when you start to get into these conversations it's not so much that I will develop a way for them to get better. They will come up with a way for themselves to get better and if you reinforce their idea then they're more apt to embrace their ideas rather than something coming from me and telling them drugs are bad for you, they'll mess up your liver, they'll, 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 you have cell adaptation and your lungs will get bad. That, they've seen that on television and heard that a million times. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about a better way of life, what do you want in your life? How are you going to achieve that in your life? What are the obstacles going to keep you from achieving that in life? Then what we do is we actually backdoor the talk on drugs and alcohol because eventually they'll get to, well, if I have a $100,000 home and I go out and buy 10 or $25 worth of marijuana or I have a $25,000 car and I lose my car for $10, that, how does that balance on the scale? If I have a good job and, I, and I'm, I'm doing pretty good and, and I go to work under the influence of drugs or alcohol and I lose that good job, what's going to happen to me? Is it worth the risk? you got to weigh the risk and then you get a chance to make choices. Those are some of the things that the seminar will talk about and, and so much more. But I'm really excited about this and I know it's going to be a, a wonderful experience and productive experience. Thank you so much, Sydney, and, and he's just one typical example of the kind of quality in the, uh, of, of our presenters and the excitement and passion that they're bringing to this, and also poster child for emphasizing our approach, which is about not just lecturing to our young people, but helping them, to giving them the kind of information um, and, 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 and engaging them in activities that will lead them to make a good decision. So it's all about decision making and helping them to arrive at a stage where they are empowered to make the right decisions. Okay, um, I, Miss Bonnie, I heard you say uh, that you would like to make a few concluding comments before I, I always give the minister the last word. So, it would, is okay. there anything else then you would like to say before we bring? <laughs> I turn you over to minister. Me. I'm going first this time. Oh, that's it. I, I, I let you go first this yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Minister, can I do that? Sure. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say we've done to thank you. You know how grateful we are that if the message that I want to impart that I'm equal as passionate about the children or I wouldn't be here is that we too not just the, our youth we need to change the way we go about what we're paid to do what we do on a daily basis and how we do it we need to care doesn't we're not going to change this it doesn't matter how many policemen we have it doesn't matter who the commissioner of police is. It doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter how big 
how many buildings and how you do build northward or any other change of building. What matters is that we care, that you're here, that there are the agencies who are not here and they couldn't all be at the same time. Um, that we come together <coughs> and own this problem as ours. It's not the Cayman Islands problem. If it's the Cayman Islands problem, then where are you? It's our <coughs> problem and we need to take it seriously. We need to take, we need to own it. I sometimes stop by my cross and see a young guy outside on a bicycle at the wrong time at night on a Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. and call him and say, in good Caymanian, Bobo, what are you doing out here? Nobody know whom. I hungry. I not going to where to go. I don't know him. And truthfully, I'm not even scared that he's going to do me anything because I communicated with him in the way that he understands. You hungry? Yeah, give me some money now. You hungry? Let me give you some food. What's your name? Who's your parents? I'm dealing right now with a young child that I never met before. Three months ago, I was at a particular house, saw him riding by too late, too young. What are you doing? I can't go home, they're gonna beat me. So what are you gonna do? Ride up and down. Till when? Where, 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 where do you plan to sleep? Well, that conversation and that care has gone to, there's a case conference this Friday on his behalf. I could have ignored him, hope that he doesn't find out where I live. Don't do me anything. We need to take stop. We're talking about what the youth need to start doing and what how we plan to you know, do that. We need to buy into this. I mean, we have talked to so many agencies, Michael and I. I want to thank my boss in the Scotland, Mrs. Scotland, who heard the word youth, Clifton Hunter, and said go. <laughs> she didn't get to John Gray. If not, I wouldn't have all the time to do this also. Um, but even in, you know, I thank everyone, but in talking to the agencies, we're getting a little bit too caught up in budget and output. This has cost the government is zero dollars as of this day, from this moment. We get too caught up in the dotting the I's and crossing the T's and which output does this align to, and hence my apology early on, he knows what I'm talking about. Does crime prevention fall under the cabinet? Is it a ministry of education? I understand it's a process. I understand it's important, but can we clear the cobwebs away? It is about our youth, and if they're not here to take this country over, except for you getting paid and living a fairly good life right now, what are we doing this for? Three score and ten I'm very close to, so I could just stop right now. But my child is going to stay here. My daughter, my family, and all of our children. And I'm just asking us to take a little bit more ownership and a little bit more responsibility for this issue as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Minister, final thoughts following on from that? <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I outtalked it. No, I, I just really want to thank my thank Bonnie. Uh, she has always been very passionate about this subject, and and there's obviously a lot of room, a lot of people in this room and and across our, our community who do. I think the the key though is is how we act, as she said, and no no pun intended. Youth Act is about action, and it is about trying to get all of us to do something that we didn't do yesterday. Because I think we'll all would admit that if that doesn't happen, then there will be no change. And so this has to be about real change, not tinkering at the edges, but real fundamental change. And I want to thank our chief officer um, for all of her hard work and, and leadership in this area. Um, 
I think our schools and, and our ministry get beat up a lot and there's lots of expectations. Uh, but we take those responsibilities seriously. We have over 5,000 children in our care every single day. And every one of them in their lives mean the world to us. And, and if we can do, continue to do through programs like this, initiatives like this, something positive that can turn around one, two, three, four young people's lives, that's how we're going to make that impact. And so I just wish everyone who's going to be involved in the 31st and June, May 31st and June 21st, um, every success. I am confident. Uh, you heard Mr. just a tip of the iceberg with Mr. Williams. I'm, I'm confident that it's going to be impactful for young people. And once we can embed it in our schools, then we can really create change. I want to thank my good friend, Mr. Garretta as well, who's mentioned earlier, and, and all those in the private sector. And I'm sure that he's probably going to be able to twist more arms because there, there are some other programs that complement this and complement this well that, that our ministry are excited about pushing in our school system. Um, we take the responsibility that we do have them for a significant portion of the day. And therefore, when we can coordinate and facilitate with other agencies to have that impact on our students when they are in our care, we know that that's going to be a key part of how we help change their lives. But we also know that how we engage parents and how we get change from home is how we're really going to make what I would like to call the sea change that Cayman needs to ensure that it winds up being the place that I know all of us want it to be and know it can be. So thank you all. Thank you, Minister. So youth crime, antisocial behavior, we know the statistics, we know the problems, what we need are solutions, interventions. And that's what today is all about. Um, this initiative, Youth Act Trust, being set up as an organization, collaborating with the Ministry of Education, but so many of our agencies to make a difference, to provide a, an innovative program that will have the sort of impact that will engage our young, our, our young children um, into to thinking about issues uh, and, and to be making better choices. So we're really excited. This very much builds on, on the approach our ministry takes. We're, we always focus on interventions. We figure there are enough reports out there about what's going wrong. We need more that talk about all the things that, that we can do. And, and the way forward, our ministry, like others, are challenged by these um, difficult fiscal times. But when we partner with others, as we have with Youth Trust, Youth Act, Youth Act Trust, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. And, and, and that's what excites me, is that instead of just being part of a group saying there are all these problems, we're here talking today about a program that can make a difference, about interventions that are meaningful. Well, that, that brings our, our press conference to a conclusion. Uh, today is a wonderful day, a one, wonderful day of celebrating an intervention, uh, a, which is a partnership between government and the private sector to deliver a program, a program that focuses on, on, on engaging ways uh, that we can have an impact on young people and they, to enable them to make better decisions when it comes to issues like youth uh, violence, like antisocial behavior, like uh, gangs, a whole range of issues that are having an impact on our young people today. And through this partnership, we, we are convinced that we will make a real difference. So thank you all. Thank you.